audience is happy with us. Yes. So we got <laughs> new Star Wars, you guys. It happened. We all saw it, right? Yeah. We, we all, all saw it in this room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, we're not going to talk spoilers today because no. oh, people have okay. some people have not seen it. Some people internationally, I don't even know if they have access to it, apparently. Right. But uh, we do want to see, we do want to talk about whether or not we actually enjoyed the show or not. And mm-hmm. I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, How dare you? For the most part. <laughs> How dare you use that most part stuff? Um, look, okay, I've been watching go. Watchmen, and it's such a Yo, fantastic show that it's really so hard. Good. It's like when I when I get obsessed with a show, it's really hard for me to watch a new show and be like, it's good, mm-hmm. but it's not like this other one, mm-hmm. you know? And so, and look, the positives for me, it looks beautiful. The Mandalorian mm-hmm. is a beautiful looking show. Mm-hmm. The cinematography is just it, it made me want to slobber all over my TV. Uh, but uh, the score, the score by Ludwig, Goranson. really really mm-hmm. great. Yes, Very cool. That's, Thank you, Cody. I don't think that's, that's it. it. Uh, that's that's not it. Yeah, no, that's no. not Ludwig. Yeah, yeah. No, that's definitely not Ludwig. Are we sure? Uh, but thank you, Cody. Okay. Um, so uh, every morning, <laughs> Koi doesn't sleep. Um, <laughs> so much to do. <laughs> but anyways, so uh, the other thing I like, other than the music, is the fact that it felt like uh, kind of like a western. And, yeah. and that's Definitely. how that's how the original Star Wars was, uh, you know, made to be. Yeah. And so it was kind of cool to to see that that throwback feeling to the Star Wars universe. Some of the stuff felt a little prequelish to me, and I'm not a fan of that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, when you say that prequelish, what is you what do you the mean? The way by that? it looked and some of the okay. creatures okay. and uh, and it's just it's just. I know this it's, that Star Wars has changed yeah. and, and it's never going to be like the original trilogy. So uh, it's weird how Star Wars has become the biggest thing ever, mm-hmm. but it still chases that like, oh, it's just a bunch of guys in the desert with makeup right. and the lips flap don't ever match perfect. But that's cool. That's cool. It's cool. It's a puppet. Yeah. You know, and you know, it's a puppet. And you know, it's a puppet. <laughs> but that's cool. It's charming. It's charming. It's charming. And it's like, yeah, it is. But like. Y'all could make this look better, but it's a Star Wars. Star Wars. Star. So that's it's interesting <laughs> right. that they're that they're like they have all the money in the world, but they're chasing that indie feel of like this is all we got. This, I thought you know? that was interesting. The new yeah. trailer, the the episode nine trailer, the newest one. Uh-huh. There was a shot where they were like following a ship into the larger ship, and like all of the details looked like it was from the seventies, which I know was intentional. Right. But I definitely had the moment of like. Yeah. I don't know how I should feel because I get yeah. what you're doing and I acknowledge that's yes. a positive, but I also feel like I'm seeing, like, I don't know. Yeah. And I felt it's like tough. the same with Mandalorian where yeah. I really enjoyed it. I actually liked it more than a lot of, uh, oh, man, I'm going to say it. I liked it more than a lot of Star Wars content. So I had a really good time. I'm hearing a lot of that. I'm just afraid of the Whoa. internet. <laughs> Star Wars fans scared me. No, no, no. The, own it. The internet, just don't say The Last Jedi and you should I'm be I'm just going to not say you those three words. Fine. Cody, do you have a whiteboard ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to, in fact, try not to say Jedi in case it sounds like the words last or the are near it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I really enjoyed it because it felt like the original trilogy yes. more to me than a lot of things have. Yes. Yep. And I really liked that Return of the Jedi makeup stuff when it, it, it worked more than a lot of the attempts I think lately have to make it old and retro mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because I love the new characters and I loved how instantly endearing they are because to me mm-hmm. Star Wars is about how monumentally impactful a two minute character is mm-hmm. to me Star Wars is this character has three lines and it has a toy because that's how yep. much it matters like Greedo and, and Boba Fett instantly yep. and yep. I love that character who just walks around saying like I have spoken Yeah, that's amazing yep. that character has five minutes of screen time yep. and I'm like I'd buy that toy and, and that's, that's yeah. Star Wars and that's Nick Nolte Mm-hmm. <gasps> well, the voice he wasn't in the. Yeah. It was like a like a smallish actor. In yeah, that, yeah, but that, it is yeah. the voice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't know that. I like there it even you go. more. Nicolte. Also, Brian Pesane's in this. Carl Weathers. I never yeah. knew I needed yeah. in Star Wars, but I totally did. Burner had heard song. Best part. I mean, he was the he coolest was, person ever. Best yeah. part. Yeah. If you guys don't yeah. know who he is, watch all his other movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Watch Grizzly Man. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, but uh, but generally, you you all liked it, right? Yes. Hector, what did you think? I liked it. I had a really good time with it. I liked the. Um, even though I had to retrain my brain, the pacing, I really enjoyed the pacing. I was yeah. talking to Roka about this outside. The pacing is vastly different from Star Wars that I'm mm-hmm. used to because at one point in the show I was watching and I'm like, am I bored right now? Am I getting a little bored? Mm-hmm. I think I am because things that happened in this pilot episode, in this first episode, would happen in 20 minutes mm-hmm. of a movie. Because the movies just move so quickly, but it's that Western vibe. Mm-hmm. It's a new pacing, and I was like, le- like, kind of letting myself settle in and be like, "This is cool that we're gonna, you know, that this is gonna be that nice stretched out TV format." I so like how I, you settle in. I just, you know, you settle because cool. at first I'm like, "Okay, here we go, Mandalorian, here we go," and the show's like, "No, no, no, yeah. no, 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 we're not gonna go that fast. We're gonna yeah. take 20 minutes to get off this first planet, yeah. and it'll be cool." But like, hold your horses, and I'm like, "Okay, all right." Okay, here we go. And uh, I love the ending. I thought the ending, that's the ending that, the, that made me so, so excited. But here's the other thing. 
I loved the Western vibe of it. Mm-hmm. I think that it nailed a lot of that stuff. But while watching the show, and I really enjoyed the show, and I cannot wait to see the rest of the season, I'm going to do the opposite of what you did, Koi. It made me like The Last Jedi even more. Mm. Because everybody... <laughs> no, lean into Boom. it, Hector. <laughs> lean into it, dude. Oh. I'll, I'll tell you why. Your brother. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Let's go. I'll, t- I'll tell you why. Uh, and thank you for the last episode of Collider Live. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why. No, I'll, I'll never be invited back. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Nope. nope. Um, guess, guess what? Producer likes yeah. you. You're fine. Mar- Martin Scorsese is right about every single thing he says about the Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I also feel like it is unfortunate that they're the they're no longer the underdog. Marvel is the top of the food chain. And even within Marvel and the, that genre, I think that they should get more credit for bending and breaking rules that they're playing with. They mm-hmm. absolutely have rules and limitations in their movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they themselves bend and break them to give us interesting and exciting stories. Mm. I think Star Wars has even stricter rules. Yeah. And even though there's after, there's after the this trilogy from the beginning or, or after to the prequels? now okay. everything. Okay. Everything. I think that the prequels one of their many sort of mistakes is that they're also adhering to those mm-hmm. rules right. more so than people think that they deviate from them. I don't think that they do. I agree. I think they adhere to those rules and I think that the rules of Star Wars are great and have led to Continuity, consistency, storytelling, mm. and stuff that I love about comics. Mm-hmm. I, I love continuity, but it also means like you're you're here, right? And you're only going to get that. So to be able to like some Marvel movies in Phase Two, where they're bringing in Ant Man with the heist vibe, and you know other movies that are like, well, now it's this, but this vibe, where it's all still superhero movie. Winter Soldier is a political thriller. It right, is, but it's right. still a superhero movie. Star Wars should be able to do more. We have always wanted more vibes, more tones, more right. genres. Right. And I want to see so well, and, much more of that. And tonally, I think that uh, you, each trilogy actually has different tones, like, for sure. Agree. And so, and so that's kind of where I was hoping Mandalorian would would be something that's a mix of everything. Sure. But uh, but also new stuff that we haven't seen before because it's, that's yes. that's how you expand a universe yeah. by not just adding new characters, new planets, right. new whatever, but, but new but, tones and correct. new themes. Yeah. And it feels so nice to live in the same universe with new characters. Like, specifically, yes. it yeah. feels so nice to not yes. be waiting for Leia, Luke, or Han. Right. It feels Agreed. so nice to not be like... So, and that's what we talked about when I was on Rule of Two. Sorry to yeah, yeah. No, go, no, yeah. I agree. I think that it there's it's a strong showing for what the potentiality of the show could be. Right, mm-hmm. right. And I can't wait to see that explored. I love the new characters. And I also love that there's a lot of, like, this is post-Empire, post-Empire, post-Return of the yeah. Jedi. I like living in that little world. But... All of that said, it still felt like, especially because, you know, I watched the newest episode of Watchmen right before. Yeah. And Watchmen's breaking my brain with what it's doing with the rules of TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So here's a spoiler. I'm so I have to do this for Watchmen. Dude, Spoilers. D- dude throws little fetuses in a lake. And I was like, are you... I'm like, how can you do this? Mm. And then I watched the first episode of The Mandalorian, and it is Star Wars. Yeah. It's cool, and it's a Western, and mm. I dig it, but it definitely is. That. So I'm like, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about Martin Scorsese's very correct observations about genre filmmaking and, and big pop culture filmmaking. So, and how safe we stay, right? So my, my takeaway was I dug it, but that's another reason I really, really, really like the Last Jedi because it still plays with those things. But to me, the Last Jedi bends or breaks yeah. as many rules as it can get away with while still feeling and being like Star Wars to me. Right. right. And so, okay. God, yes, man. Really quick. Everything. Yes. Really quick. Yeah. Well, I disagree <laughs> a little bit. I agree that uh, anything, I said it before on the show, but anything to do with uh, Luke and Yoda and the Ray Kylo stuff, like, mm-hmm. I loved all that. Mm-hmm. It's the Kanto bite stuff that took me out of the but movie. Listen, I, I, won't, then, I can't get over that. So no, that I get stuff. it. It's yeah. corny it, and cheesy. And Star it's Wars is Star full Wars. of corny and cheesy. I would disagree. Not that way. That's like, that was like weird Harry Potter uh, for kids or Spaceballs humor. That wasn't I, I disagree. I go, you got to look at the whole thing as, again, adult brain. And right. there's weird, goofy, puppety, cheesy, corny stuff in all of st- – in the prequels, in the original trilogy. I don't care what your favorite is. I don't care what you like. I don't care what you think is serious for adult. It's all goofy, silly, silly, fun stuff for children. But what I love about that stuff, and I know why people don't like it, and it's totally fair. It is, it's weird and it's silly and it's goofy. Thematically, I think it, again, bends and breaks some rules of Star Wars. It actually brings in some, well, this is why the wars of Star Wars is happening. Yeah. And here's who's benefiting from them. And here are the this power the structures. This is why the wars in the stars yeah. is happening. Seriously. And then, and you have to have um, the Rose character 
uh, explain, uh, uh, to Rose Tico explain to Finn, like, no, 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 this is how the world works, and this is, th- I want to inject some of these themes into this space adventure about uh, a, a solitary person that takes up a destiny. Like, but there's a bigger picture here, and I, DJ I is involved in that, and I just loved what those themes brought. It's I agree silly, with they that, ride but horses, I didn't like, it's, it's goofy, it's, it's, it looks it's bad. the execution. Sure, Everything sure. you're saying makes sense, but again, but I didn't I, like the dialogue or the execution for all those things. That's fair. I that's forgive it all, because I forgive a lot of Corny Star right, Warsness, right. but I understand people's uh, mileage may vary. For yeah. me, The Mandalorian does what I think genre content does well, is it gives you a different flavor while still knowing exactly what you want out of it. Mm-hmm. When I watch a Star Wars or a Marvel movie or anything, even if it's like you're saying a different genre within the genre, which is something I've always admired these films are able to do. I think Rogue yeah. One mm-hmm. took a lot of different Same. chances, and I think, I think yeah. that's the beauty of these films, but you're also like... You know what that seventeen dollars or twelve dollars or however much movies are in your town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what that's getting you, mm-hmm. and that is both the gift and the curse of the content because it really keeps you in this this perspective for the filmmakers. But it also is reliable, and that's why they make all this money. Right. But yeah. I love with Watchmen and Mandalorian existing at the same time with with El Camino, which I <laughs> loved so much. Yeah. With all of these things is. It's like going to a comic store mm-hmm. or going to a good restaurant. Right. Mm-hmm. It's either, for me, those are the two ways I see content. Yeah. The comic store is you got a spinner rack. I can either go Vertigo title, I can go, you know, young Spider Man title, I can go Ultimate Spider Man or Spectacular or Amazing, or I can go over here and read something I've never read. I can read Saga or Mr. Miracle. Right. That's all the content. Or it's like a great buffet where I can make these choices. I don't want. Mandalorian to be more like Watchmen. I Correct. just have to know when I'm switching over to Correct. make sure I let myself go. I'm having potatoes, not green beans. Right, right. and that's and that's it. you you describe it perfectly, Coy. And I think that uh, it's it's true that it's weird that I grew up reading all these superhero comic books, right, mm-hmm. and being obsessed with with Batman, X Men, etc. But then as an adult nowadays, maybe maybe because we're so inundated with that content, I seek the indie alternative sure. comics, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I'm, I, I Brian Cavon's my favorite comic book writer of all time. So yeah. every time he writes. Something Something new. I want to check it out. Whether Mm -hmm. it's Saga, Private Eye, like whatever, Uh, everything he does is amazing. And so, that's the type of stuff that is going to be at the priority list Mm -hmm, for me. You know, at the top of my Mm -hmm, priority list. mm -hmm. And then, and then if I still have cool Star Wars stuff to to watch, or then that's cool, right? That's kind of how I see it. So that's why I wasn't seeing the Mandalorian with the eyes of like you know a super like uh, snobbish (laughs) critic that I was like, oh well, that. I mean, I kind of the best TV show ever made. No, exactly. It's It's just it's just meant to entertain, right? Yeah. Yeah. uh, What did you think, Mark? I haven't even heard your thoughts. uh, I mean, I loved it. I I think I go. What really stuck out to me, what you were saying, Hector, is is this world building and this that it took its time where you were like, what? And that's what really hit me. It was like so assured of itself. It just went, you know what? Here it is. And it's taking its time to world build. And it wasn't making any qualms about it. It was Mm -hmm. just like, here's the Mandalorian. Here's his first mission. You know, Mm -hmm. you're going to see this. You're going to feel the world. You have, you're you're not immediately getting a crawl that's telling you where we are in the universe, Mm -hmm. like all the Star Wars movies do, right? So this is just, boom, you're dropped into the story. And if you like it, great. If you want to hang out, like, and I've already seen some reaction to you know what I was expecting it to be Game of Thrones in space and it's like well that's on you I think because if you're walking in you do have expectations and I get it and I have my own expectations and I was expecting and wanting Game of Thrones in space and what happened was it started and I went I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I wait, wait. I'm feeling weird here. There's a certain character at the beginning that I was like, I don't know if I like this. The mm. tone. Right, right. I don't know if I is like it, this. You were being the, like a nerd. You're like, oh, I don't. I was being nerdy. Yeah, Horatio Sands character. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I yeah. think so. So yeah. I really liked him. But, I yeah. then I found myself. I go. You know what? All this shit. You know, mm-hmm. gotta let just let the filmmaker let Dave Filoni yes. in this case do the job that he was meant to do. And so I just sat back and then it just washed over me. Great. And I was just launched into this world mm-hmm. where I'm not getting any answers. And I'm sitting there going, give me answers. What, what, what is happening with Return of the Jedi? And then five years later, and where, how is he going to be the First Order? And where, yeah. where's yeah. Snoke? And where's Snoke? And you're just and sweaty everywhere. Be and, 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 and so, Julie's like, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> no, thank Yeah, Julie took off before yeah. this, so I, I, I had a nice quiet moment. Um, but yeah, so it, it felt really good. And then there was moments where I perked up at certain world building mm-hmm. of the Mandalorian culture itself, Super where cool. I just went, oh, shit. And then that ending... The ending ending nailed it for me where I go, there's the through line for me that this is what the first season is going to explore. 
And what the Mandalorian does, he's already gray, a gray character. We don't know his loyalties. We have an idea. But I thought it was stuck the landing for me Same. as far as here's the series we're going to uh, put out there. And that it felt like a pilot. It felt like we've had these shows before come out where you're like, huh, okay, I think I like it. I, I know – and then like you hear it with like Game of Thrones. You hear it with certain uh, you know, shows like Breaking Bad oh, I heard you about. you got to give it four seasons. Yeah. yeah you're like, all right. Th- th- this for me is like life? Yeah. the first episode really did its job as far as setting the world, setting the characters, the feel of the universe, n- and then not answering a lot at all. Uh, for me, it was like it really didn't answer much of anything, right. and that's what I loved. What I really appreciate is all three of us described it as leaning – like we all had some allegory towards like leaning back and settling in. Like, yeah. And I feel like yeah. what I liked most about the show is that when I was watching it, I was thinking this is exactly 100 percent in every way what I would want from a Star Wars show if I knew nothing else. Mm. I, I – every – if 10 years ago you told me there would be an app called Disney Plus, be like, I don't know what that is. Right. If you told me all this content was going to I'd be like, that sounds great, but I wouldn't know how much I wanted nostalgia yet because I was 20 and didn't mm-hmm. know. But if you told me at 20 that I would have a Star Wars show with a Mandalorian and it would be this great Western heist and it would play with time and play with world building, it couldn't have landed that more. Yeah. And it feels like reading a, a Star Wars comic or reading yes. one of the books that's yeah. over here. Totally. And that's, a, a, yeah, that's for true. me, that's everything. So I was able to go like, this is that thing I didn't know I needed. Right. And it's weird to think about, imagine if we had this show now, but we hadn't had anything new Star Wars since the original trilogy. Oh, it would have broken the internet. Yeah, and I think it, the show would have been different. Ex- well, not only that, yeah. but but I also, I, and I'm wondering if the show would be better because of that, even because you don't have Maybe. all of this. the pressure. You know, exp- the pre- Exactly. The pressure or expectations that people put on on something like this, where it's like, what's the distribution of percentage totally. that we have to like yeah. give to nostalgia, whether it's like, or fan service. And but what's the percentage that we're putting into just making a good show, regardless yeah. of trying to please anyone? Well, right. We, we have this story. And so we're going to do it. It's a Mandalorian. That's what we're going to do. And they release it weeks before the episode nine. No right. pressure. Literally no <laughs> pressure. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's that, what you I, know found, what I, mean? like, I find that very time. fascinating. Yeah. Right actually. Yeah. Also, I, yeah. Can, can we talk really quick about my favorite part of the show yes if, if, as long as it's not a spoiler it's not because he's in the he or she is in the trailer which is ig-11 mm. oh yeah because ig-88 is the coolest <laughs> droid in the universe and i was very happy to see really that fun. that my, was my favorite my scene, favorite personally. part was Werner herzog for sure oh yeah i mean he's yeah. pretty rad yeah but but ig-11 shoots stuff and, like yes. we got to see him do the laser thing yes. and that was really fun yes, for me that, i very much enjoyed that mm-hmm. that yeah. was amazing yeah and yeah. i was IG-11, all like being, yeah. like halfway through the show i was just like you know, being a dumb like nerd critic, mm-hmm. and then as soon as IG Eleven showed up, I was like, "Oh, okay, yeah. guys, you know this is my guy." You know what's great about that is that IG Eighty Eight. I was never a huge fan. Mm-hmm. I didn't love the design when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I think I had a buddy who had the action figure. Everybody knows IG Eighty Eight is one of the bounty hunters in the sort of Boba Fett group, yeah. and they all look really cool. He's the coolest looking one. Super Hector. cool. But here's the deal: with nineteen eighty three. In 1980 technology, yeah. that robot could not move. Right. The action figure, you know, you're getting the Kenner movement. And right. I'm like, how effective can that be as a droid? Then I see IG-11, uh, 11. 11, and I go, this dude can move. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. like, with C- with CG adding oh, to his so movement, beautiful. I go, that's a great design. Yeah. I love it. I get it now. So. And I love that it was like a 90s action scene set within a 70s Western. I love exactly. that, like, the robot yes. was Jason Bourne making yeah. moves. I know. And, like, I know that's 2000s, <laughs> but, like, that kind of He's thing. He's like Neo. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just not, and then it makes sense why yeah. would a droid need to look it was right. just all of those things and that, oh man i love that yeah no i hope we get to see his flamethrower when 